Hey everybody, it's morning here with another edition of the daytime show of Encounters. That's right, we were on last night with a late night show. We're on this morning. Hey, Johnny Miller. Hey everybody. Welcome for those that are not on at night. Hey, Sprite. So for those that aren't on at night or have missed me at nighttime who are only on during the morning, we're trying to do some morning shows here during the day. Cultural commentator, good morning, everybody. Jenny, uh, thank you about uh, the great show last night. GG, good morning, everybody. Marinade, Grand Rising to you. Peace, love, and light. This is the morning edition of Encounters. And I did post a video. I made the, uh, the video this morning, early this morning. I posted the video about our contact with Gotico for Friday night, starting at 11 p.m., right here on TikTok. We'll be communicating. Uh, me and John Connors will be coordinating communications with our space brother, Gotico on his spaceship that will be somewhere around the planet Earth, who knows where, and we'll be communicating with him directly. Gotico will be probably here with me, unseen. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see here. UFOs are fake news. Uh, so there, since you only have one follower and that's all you've got to say, we are now blocking uh, that sincerely. I sincerely am blocking you, okay? So there we go. That person is a goner. Hey, good morning, Handy J. Good to see you on Encounters, the number one UFO spiritual talk show right here on social media good to have everybody with us super hawk bravo star uh witty chicken good to have you with us and everyone else coming in here we are a proactive talk show host so you know we don't let trolls come in here uh we try to keep everything on the up and up on this show tammy lou uh Levy Hart, good to have you with us. Everybody coming in here, Temporarily Boston. Thanks for following us. Greetings and salutations. X-Blade, good to have you with us, man. Scott, uh, I see I'm trying to catch all these names uh, coming on here. Mary Beth, welcome to our show. Royal Roy, good morning, everybody. Felita, I think it is. Catherine, welcome to our show and all the new people. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he was. Uh, uh, Bravo Star, have you done any research on UFO activity in crop circles in Hemlock, Michigan? No. Are you in Hemlock, Michigan? I'd love to hear some information about that. Good morning, Polita, and uh, everybody. So it's always, I always like to hear people if they have information of things happening. And there, Stella Bella, good morning of crop circles or whatever UFOs where they live. You can share that information with the rest of our audience here on Encounters. You know, so you're infinite. Uh, good to have you with us. Handy J, welcome. Uh, Virgil, welcome to our show. Trey, good morning, Trey. Kevin Carey, could you please read my last two comments? Let me see here. Your last two comments were, as I go backwards, he was channeling. I saw that one. And let's see after that one. Let me see here. Uh, let's see. I just caught your comment he was channeling. I don't see any other comment other than that one. Did I miss something here? Let me see. Good morning. I fell asleep last night. I'm going back. Ah, Laura, welcome to the show, Laura. So I think I caught up in most of the messages here. Paradise, welcome to the show. And a good morning to everybody, wherever you are in the world, you're watching Encounters. I'm your host, Commander Alian, the man from Mars, also talk show host for 20 years on WESU Pacifica NPR affiliate here in Connecticut uh, every Sunday morning. I'm also, I work with the Ashtar Galactic Command for new people coming in here. They are the uh, spiritual forces of light, the highest levels of the galactic forces off planet. Susan Hill, welcome to the show. And, uh, yeah, so uh, we're glad to have everybody here. 
If you have any stories related to UFO sightings you're having or any visitations you're having, um, maybe it wasn't meant to be. Maybe, yeah, I read that comment. Maybe it was. Uh, so, yeah, definitely, Susan Hill, welcome to the show. You know, so if you have any stories at all, Excalibur, welcome. Well, our show is about uh, people being interviewed here, sharing their like, encounter stories. Uh, we've had lots of people that have had visitations with space people uh, in cosmic dreams and in actual reality. People have actually had those interactions. So we're always interested in hearing your stories. Uh, Bravo Star says, the two crop circles were formed in a field behind my parents' home in Hemlock. You know what, uh, Bravo Star, we're going to bring you on here to talk about that. Give me one moment. So, Bravo Star, we're going to invite you on the show here. I think Bravo Star has um, some inter interesting stories to tell here. So, Bravo Star, if you press the accept thing, it'll bring you on screen and then press the camera. I'll have you on the show here. You have over a thousand followers. And uh, I just sent you a guest request to have bring you on the show. We'd like to have you talk about... Uh, that whole thing. Where is he? So hopefully we'll be able to get him on here. We'll see if he's still in the room. Smitty, welcome to the show. The Portly Ranger, welcome to the show. Tawanda Wright, welcome to the show. Nick, 60. Uh, William Rich. Ella, welcome to Encounters. User 965. Good morning, Dragon Fay. Good to have you with us, Jag and Faye, RK2023, Reprisor, Donald, welcome to our show, Grand Rising Lopaka, Indian Girl, Florida World, welcome, Annette, welcome to our show, Encounters, Jim, welcome to Encounters, we try to acknowledge people, Rodney, Mississippi Kid, and Daju something, Pumpkin Patches, well, all kinds of interesting names here, Marilyn, welcome to the show, Dez. This is Encountered Wicked. Uh, all the people coming in here, welcome to our show, Encounters. And um, again, I'm looking to do some interviews this morning. Give me one moment. We'd like to interview some people. And so we'd like to uh, do some interviews with people this morning. Uh, one of my beautiful things is I, I like to hear your stories. Uh, all over the world, there are people having encounters and uh, visitations. I've had weird things happen to me. Uh, tastes like candy. Can you explain what those things are? And if they're related to the ET stuff, we'd love to uh, try to bring you on here. Let's see. You have 75. Well, you only have 75 followers, but we're going to follow you. Tastes like candy. We're going to follow you. You're up in Canada. We need to get you up to 200 to get you on audio here. Uh, so we'd love to have you on with us. Uh, and welcome, everybody. It seems a, I seemed, it says, I seemed a possible future. You saw a possible future. Hey, James, good morning. Teresa, welcome, Chuck. So TDPWF, can you explain what you mean? What you mean, I seemed, I think you're saying I've seen a possible future. Hey, Carrie R., welcome to Encounters. Sakoto, welcome. WNEMTV5, did a human interest story about UFO activity hemlock in 2015. Bravo Star, uh, I'm trying to bring you up on here. I just pressed the guest button here on my side here. So if you're getting, if you're getting requested to come on, accept the request, it should pop up on your screen. Just press the button to accept the request, and you can talk about it with me right on the, uh, the show here. Uh, we'd love to have you on here. Benjamin Bassey, John Montgomery, thanks for the follow. Uh, I'm just seeing who's on here. I've had visions and seen ships multiple times and godlike things in the sky. Interesting. Interesting. 
Joe Taylor, welcome. A remote viewer of four years experience in contact East since June, been having encounters. Gray Druid, let me see here. Gray Druid, we're going to bring you up here. Uh, I'm going to press the guest thing here. I'd like to have you share your story. Can you tell us where you're from? Bring your camera on, Rabbi. Good to see you this morning. Welcome. So you've got to do, I just sent you a request to join us on live. You press the little thing. There's a, a screen that will pop up. Camera on, too. If you don't know how to turn the camera on, I can help you. Good morning. Good morning. And can you turn your camera on for us on the uh, show here? Yeah, give me one moment. Sorry, I'm like five minutes. I got to rush out the door, but I can talk for a little uh, No problem. Five minutes will be good. We'd love to hear uh, your story, too. And we have Gray Druid. He'll be sharing some information of his experiences. And this is what the show is about. We love everybody's. Hey, there you are. Good morning. Good morning. So whereabouts in the world are you? And can you give us some background of how all these things started with you in terms of contact and so forth? Yeah, so um, yeah, so I go by Great Druid. Um, I have a channel um, devoted towards remote viewing, um, psychic connection and uh, NHI experiences and how they're all intertwined. Um, yeah, okay. I'm from Idaho and um, oh, well, my 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 um, experience kind of goes back a while, but um, I'll just give you a brief summary. Um, uh, I grew up in Northern California. Had a lot of weird stuff happening uh, to me and my family. We grew up near a, two uh, Native American reservations. Um, had a lot of weird spiritual stuff happen. Um, UFOs all the time. Just a lot of things at an early age. Um, it got me interested into, um, kind of all that stuff, but I was also scared to, you know, kind of initiate cause I grew up, uh, in as a, as a Baptist and, yeah. um, I know there's a lot of people in our, in the UFO community that are, you know, um, you know, used to be part of the church and stuff. And that's always kind of a stepping stone of getting past that fear. But, uh, yeah. um, I got into remote viewing, um, when I helped out a group with missing people, um, it was a lot of things that I can't really talk, go into specifics, but um, right. it definitely was an experience. Um, so I did that for four years. Um, and uh, as I got out of it, um, I started having um, uh, flashes of past lives, um, hmm. memories that were connected to other people that were totally outside of me that I would relay and then they would complete the memory or different things like that. So I knew it wasn't just me being weird. Right. Um, so, uh, that kind of initiated me wanting to reach out to a, um, um, see if I could connect to anything. And, uh, so I projected myself to a location, a plant, a separate planet, um, I went, tried to go there when I was afraid it like bounced me back in my body. I wasn't right. allowed to go. And then, um, I kind of two weeks later, I re, uh, repossessed myself of like, okay, I just need to accept whatever comes. And sure enough, made that contact and, um, was a very amazing experience. And so, wow. um, yeah, but, uh, the interesting part. So I started my channel back in June. Um, okay. I kind of decided to cross my love for film and video to and bring in the esoteric and um, uh, uh, astral projection aspect and just try to make right. content around it and share my own experiences or whatever um, insight I could have for others. And right. um, uh, since since that, I've been having uh, interactions with. Uh, NHIs, I've found out that they're NHIs that have been in contact with me since I was a kid. Um, and can you could you define what an NHI is to people on encounters watching the show? Yeah, so NHI are non-human intelligence, um, and that is something oh, okay. that I believe really Grush uh, brought up one or one or two different times. I know it's just the way that I like to um, explain them because it. I think a lot of people when you talk about um, extraterrestrials they kind of think of little green men and it's you know yeah a they do disposition right right absolutely the cultural thing right 
you know, so that's a good way of putting it, NHIs. So the NHIs that you had contact with, you know, for me, um, I'm having contact here. We made contact a month ago through my Alex app. Uh, they were trying to contact me, people from the Constellation Cirrus. And uh, it, um, it, it uh, so tomorrow night, we're going to be doing uh, communications with them through radio frequencies directly here and my friend in Arizona. So when you say NHIs, I can completely relate to that. Uh, I think that's a, a good way of, you know, putting it. Um, and can you tell us what kind of NHIs you've been in touch with, where they're from? Have you had direct encounters physically? Some of our people have been guests here. They've come in their rooms. People say they've seen light beings, uh, translucent beings. There's all kinds of, you know, space people out there. So I'm kind of curious what your experience has been. Um, for so, so the ones I've been in contact with, um, I, they haven't really revealed their physical form, at least um, mm -hmm. that I that I am that I understand. I had a, um, and I know there's different classifications of abduction cases. So the abduction case that happened about a month and a half ago for me, I it was mm -hmm. astral. Um, mm -hmm. uh, long story short, I was having trouble sleeping. Um, went into the other room, laid down in a different bed. And I felt like I needed to project myself out. It was kind of weird, random, but um, mm -hmm. I was like, okay, I'm just going to go with it. Um, my energy pulled to the right, specifically, and then I was like, boom, I was like on a ship. I was like, the ship was curved up top, flat on bottom. It was hard mm. to judge the size, so I don't know if there was some spatial dimension stuff going on, but... Uh, right. Um, they were all grays. All of them were grays. They were kind of doing their thing. Like a lot of them were just running around doing stuff. And then there was, um, four of them that kind of were doing stuff. They looked at me and then they, I just had this kind of general sense of, oh yeah. Okay. Um, like I had forgotten my doctor's appointment, but I needed about, yeah. oh yeah, I forgot. Like it, it was that kind of feeling i laid down the table and i went about my day i went to work i did my um i had a lunch break completely forgot about the whole it, it, uh thing and this is a weird thing yeah. i've i've uh talked with um a few of my people uh that i talk with daily on here that are like oh yeah this was the same experience i had you know so it was interesting but, um, uh i saw I was out in a 15 minute break. I was walking with my coworkers. I look up in the clouds and there's a rainbow cloud, just one little like rainbow cloud. Right. In the sky. One cloud, there's yeah. Nothing yeah. else. And I was like, that's a UFO. Like it just popped in my head. Now my logical brain is like, that's not a UFO. That's just some, that's just a cloud. Right. But it was enough to, when I went home, um, I was like, something happened. And then it all just came flooded back. And so um, um, I don't remember what happened on the table. I know that there was something that they needed to do uh, that I had agreed with. They were the group that they're part of the group that I've been in contact with for a while. And mm -hmm. when I say that, it's not like I can remember any type of right lasting do you, different scenario. Do you think that... Uh that they abducted you or were they friendlies or were they uh, beings that were there to assist you? Uh, because the word abduction, you know, it's one of scary. the things I, it, no, it, no, not so much that, it's just the abduction definition in, in my years of being in the subject and going to conferences is that you get abducted, it's a, you know, you're, you're implanted, they do kinds of weird stuff to you. Right. When you say abducted, did you feel a threat from the beings that were on that ship, or did they seem to be friendly to you and want to help you? Or what was their purpose with you? Sorry, I'm going to turn my um, I'm going to turn my uh, video off. I keep talking. I just need to. Um, yeah, no, no problem. Um, I'm really curious about what their what what they did to you, how they communicated with you. Did they say anything to let to do telepathic communications with you? You know, what did they do to you? So there was some interaction. I mean, I can go. In, I can go into detail of how it all felt because I'm 
Yeah. You're doing remote viewing, you get a lot of, um, you know, like you just get a lot of impressions on everything. Um, they psychically were not really interacting with me. They were doing their own thing, but I yeah. did not feel a sense of danger or foreboding or anything like that. Okay. So did they try to? Uh, uh, did they tr did they try to do any implants? I know some people say that they've had experiences uh, being implanted or having uh, you know chips put into them by the beings. Uh, what was your experience? Um, you know? I don't think I had anything put in me, but I could be mistaken. I didn't really feel like there was anything out of place. Yeah. Um, I think whatever happened was more so to do with internal aspects of my soul or I don't know what like whatever yeah whatever I knew it was kind of non-physical it was non-physical so mm -hmm. but they but they had obviously an interest with you as a human being they had an interest in communicating in their own way with you so obviously they're aware of you they're just not like say you're gonna come on a ship we're putting you on a table and we're gonna forget about you obviously there must be some connection uh, that you that you felt or they felt about you, correct? Yes, and I think I think that's one thing that. Um, um, sorry, give me one moment. I'm gonna start. It is chilly. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it is where you are right now. Uh, yeah. So it sounds like, from what we're getting, our viewers are watching here, it seems as if you didn't, I don't think, I mean, uh, it's hard to call it, I mean, to call it like an abduction, but maybe uh, that you're a contactee with them, that you, you, know, you didn't have them, they didn't come at you with a physical thing or metallic objects and try to do something to you physically. They kind of physically left you alone, but they would they obviously had you there for a purpose, correct? Did we lose him? Uh, I think we lost. Yeah. So I was uh, there. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Hang on. Nope. Um, I know he's in his car. So I was reading uh, communion. My sorry, my service will clear up in a sec. Um, I was reading communion uh, by Ritley Schreiber. Yeah, yes. Yep. We know who he is. And uh, yeah, we can hear you. he talked about the owl thing. And so one one thing that was really interesting about the owl uh, encounter he had after his abduction experience is I've had a memory of owl experience when I was a kid. And I just hmm. attribute it to weird high strangeness. But... Um, mm -hmm. I remember kind of going over some of my, um, I was at work and I realized, gee, I wonder if that memory of like owls in a tree staring at my, me and my family, if that was a, a cover memory or whatever he says in the, you mm -hmm. know, talks about. And I just kind of went on my day, you know, about an yeah. hour or so in, I start sweating profusely i really got like a, i wanted to leave work i i felt sick to my stomach like i was having kind of like a a trauma response and i have no and i was like what's wow. going on i don't know what's going on right. and i text my girlfriend and i'm like i i i'm really i feel really weird i don't know i don't know why and i keep and i started trying I'm like what's what did i eat something wrong what's going on you know i'm like wanting to cry and then mm -hmm. um, I'm like, oh, that's what I thought about like an hour ago was, mm -hmm. I wonder if this is a cover for something else, like a cover yeah. memory for something else that happened. So um, that later that, so anyway, I, I, I um, kind of accept my emotional state and process through and I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm okay now. I'm, you know, and I'm like, I am, I don't feel like it was negative, but this is just a trauma response in my body. This is okay. You know, and processing through that and so a week goes by and I 
and meditating and uh i kind of have a feeling of like them wanting to interact and so i initiate that psychic connection as best i can describe um and i get an image of uh a ship's side with water droplets and then mm. um there's an entity it looked like a hybrid and it was had very big eyes, but it was human-esque. Um, and it kind of beckoned to me on the ship. And I'm, I'm like, I'm looking up at them, like, very, you know, small. So it's probably something to do with that interaction. But um, the interesting thing about it was, so fast forward a few weeks later, I have a connection. I, I feel like I need to make contact. Mm -hmm. So I kind of put myself in an altered state and, uh, um, you know, I tell my girlfriend, just record whatever happens. And I, I feel like they want to talk. And so they kind of, I feel like they swim around my, um, so I'm trying to describe what it felt like. They kind of swam around my mind and then they start telling, first thing they say is tell your girlfriend that because she's been really worried he was really worried back then because i would have my encounters and stuff and she's like who knows what this is you know and i'm like i they're not they're not bad and so the first thing they tell her is we're not he's not in danger we're his family don't worry Hmm. and that's something that i've heard before but i you know i was just like you know okay so anyway, we get into the session. I kind of tell her a few things that she needs to personally know that they're trying to communicate to her. Um, mm-hmm. And then in the middle of it, I start convulsing. And um, I can feel them come forward. And I'm like in the back seat, just best description. So I wasn't really driving the, my body at right. that point. And mm-hmm. they say... Um, and mind you, I've never channeled before. I, I've i been a skeptic on a lot of channelers. I think Bashir is great, oh, yeah. but there's aspects of sure, yeah. I'm not fully sure. So we'll just put that in the gray, gray area for now, you know. And uh, yeah. Well, I, so, I can tell you that I don't, I don't support channeling at all. So I'm with you there, brother. Okay. Except for Bashar. Bashar... Uh, I think the word challenge for him is misused. I think he that Daryl Anka is actually in direct communications with him. And it's a different – you can feel the energy in what he does. is a little bit – very different from the there's other people. A, there's a relationship there. Yeah, there's a relationship. There's a, there's there. a connection. Go ahead. Yeah. 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 Um, so they say we're sorry for upsetting him and we're sorry – you know, we're sorry for – they were telling me, like, I'm, we're sorry for upsetting you. Um, we didn't mean to. They said we make mistakes, too, and we're sorry for causing that memory and stuff. Or, you know. And I, I, it was weird because I was crying. Tears running down my face, but I, they were still driving me. So, like, I wasn't able to fully emote until after they kind of pulled back. And I, mm. like, I was in, in a mess. But uh, uh, they said that... They said five years are, there's a lot of work to do in five years. They said, and this is something that I've been telling people because I've not really been an advocate for dates and stuff, but this is what they right. said. Um, they said five years, and this kind of comes, butts up to the 2028, 2027 time. So it's interesting. It's ah, interesting. But, interest- uh, yes, it is. They said um, that um, there would be disclosure no matter what, and they were very mm-hmm. adamant and stern about that. They were the the, mm-hmm. the 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 feeling of it was they were frustrated with how things are going. Oh, you and, mean frustrated with what our planet and our governments, right? Correct. Yes. Yes, they're I, very I agree. ticked off. That's yeah. like the best yeah, way I can they are. describe. They're, they're, the um, Galactics are very upset with us right now. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't anger towards like me or like uh, like you know. It wasn't a general anger. It was just a 
the powers that be they're like frustrated with they're like all right we've given you enough um type fe-. like that was the impression i got and um so that they said integration 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 and i was almost yelling at integration i could like write it over a whole like wall and i would just be obsessed with like it was very prominent of yeah integr- of us integration of integration whatever that means i don't know if that is a well it's interesting aspect so what you're saying great dude this is encounters i have great dude as my guest and when you're saying about what related to 2027 20, 28 so I'm going to just interject, you know, what I'm getting here. Last year, mm-hmm. I was given information about 2027 before. When I heard Bashar say it, then I said, let me get some verifications on this. I had a person in the Department of Defense who was on our show. She, She's uh, top security clearance. She was on my show months ago. I asked her about 2027. She said the DOD knows about 2027. So what they know is, now I'm just saying, there's different levels of the D Department of Defense in this country. Hmm. They're already aware that there's going to be a galactic interaction on our planet. They don't know what to do. They are they, they spent 70 years covering up exactly what you're mentioning. They don't know what to do. And so I went to some of my contacts that I trust, and everything correlates to the year 2027. But get this. The timeline has changed. Originally, last year, 2027 was the timeline. There's going to be more stuff happening into 2024 that's going to start amping up towards 2027. So people are going to start seeing things happen. What you're saying is absolutely true, uh, and uh, you're a great guest. I think uh, it correlates with everything. As soon as you said the things you said about 2027, 28, I said, exactly. Your information that you're getting is right trust it yeah and i i and i like want to preface this because i know people are going to be like oh god here's here's dates and stuff because i'm a hundred percent with like this the speculation on that because i get like misinformation or other stuff that may be released right. of, like hey this might happen or different things and right dates can change it's not a it's not a huge huge thing it's just um i, I find it i find it interesting that because i I know when I was in that state, I was not thinking about numbers. I wasn't thinking about anything. I was not in driving mode. And um, they were very specific of like this time frame, this very important. Oh, yeah, they're right. And they actually are right about that. <laughs> so, you know, when the, when the, if the beings you're dealing with are saying, you know, they're not so much angry. They're upset that we've been lied to on our planet about them. Uh, the different and uh, different galactics so what they're saying is what they're telling you is it's a messenger basically is that they're fed up they're fed up with our world governments uh, lying about the existence of intelligent life in other worlds they're fed up with the whole thing my contact i don't channel anything i'm a telepathic communicator with a being called kadarmanka and i work with the ashtar galactic command which says uh, before the internet even existed i've been working with them uh, for years and they have stated very clearly that there's going to be a time when contact is going to happen on this planet, and the people that have covered it up are going to not know what to do. They don't know what to do now. That's why they're having the disclosure hearings. They're trying to, they're trying to um, not patronize. They're trying to make people go to sleep, and they think, well, we'll do a little bit of disclosure here, and the public will just forget about it. The, po- right. the problem is, the problem they have is that there's going to be contact in a few years on a massive scale and they don't know what to do they have no control over this narrative anymore i know you have to go to work but i want to thank you for uh for coming in there you've been on for more than five minutes so i appreciate it <laughs> no thank you so much for having me and uh everyone has a happy holidays and i'm i'll subscribe um i'll give you a little uh shout out if you want to keep talking um yeah also, absolutely. by the way i'm Part of UAP society, they're a great community if you want to get in contact with other people, experiencers, and other things. Um, oh, cool. And um, me and a few other experiencers are probably going to be starting up a YouTube uh, show probably, hopefully next month, you know, but yeah. Yeah. But I'll, I'll reach out to you, uh, brother, and uh, really thank you for having yeah, me. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I have a YouTube channel for people that don't know. My encounter show, when all these shows are recorded, I put them on YouTube on Astro Command Spaceship News. 
So I, I post these shows usually the same day. I got backlogged the other day, but normally every day I, I post my morning show, my late night shows. Friday night, if you watch, uh, we're going to have contact with my uh, contact, Gattaco, from the Star System Cirrus, and, uh, and they communicate from a spaceship, but people have said they've seen them behind me standing here while we're doing it, which is kind of weird. <laughs> and now we're, you know, it, it, the whole thing is still kind of fresh in my head here, how this is working. But uh, you're, you're welcome. If you know any other people that have been contactees, let them know about our show. We're, we're welcome to have them on here and uh, do interviews with them. Yeah, for Absolutely. sure. Oh, and I wanted to mention the quick other detail. If anybody was doubting that potential uh, um, channeling experience, I had my buddy who I've been talking on a routine basis. He actually was dreaming about someone he knew that was convulsing and entities were talking through him. And he messaged me after my session and he, mm -hmm. so he was dreaming about this, the, what was happening. He's like 4,000 miles away. So wow, it was interesting. So anyway, there's a lot of, you know, synchronicities and there's a lot of, uh, connecting and it's just, it's been really amazing to, um, connect with people like yourself or other people of all sharing similar experiences. And it's really exciting. So, um, but yes. we'll be definitely in contact. Thank you so much for having me on. Oh, glad to have you on here. Thank you. And, uh, come back anytime we're following you. Uh, and everybody follow each other on here. I'm up about uplifting people on my show. I've been talk, talk radio with UFOs for years and I'm still on the radio for 20 years. So we'll have you back again whenever you want. Just uh, pop in here. If you have any new information, uh, we're glad to have you with us. And like I said, what you said about 2027, 20, 28, is very much uh, on par with everything I, I understand now. So, hey, have, have a good day out there. Have a good weekend coming up, too. Thank you. You, too. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Great Jewett, everybody. Uh, thanks, Ray Jewett. And we're, I think there's some other people that are now inspired that have had also a contact. Uh, let me see here. I'm going to bring – I'm bringing this person on. Let's see. Who are they? Uh, worst – which says they've had encounters. So we're going to bring Worst Witch on. And please put your camera on like Drew did. Uh, if you don't know how to do it, let me know and I'll help you out. Um, there's a little camera icon and we can bring you right on the camera. So this hello. is Encounters. Hey, hello, good morning. And do you know how to turn Hi. your camera on? Just give me a second. Yeah, just give uh, me no a second. Problem. I got to set up a Thank spot you. real quick. We got boxes uh, everywhere. Oh, uh, no problem, no problem. And you're watching Encounters, the... Morning edition. We usually I used to say late night because we're on at eleven o'clock in the evening. But we're here with you, everybody. Good morning. Uh, please follow everybody in here. Uh, it's it's all about you know bringing people together on my show, and you know we have a big studio here. So wherever you are, take a seat. If you've got a couch, a chair, meditation pillow, uh, we have plenty of room in the studio for all our guests and all the people watching our guests. So come on in. Good morning, Tab Z. Uh, so yeah. How do I turn my is camera it, on? <laughs> oh, there it is. Okay. Okay, you got it. There it is. Hi. In a second, we'll have you on the screen. You just have to press the thing, and it'll turn you on. Once you get the little – there you go. Now you got it. Good morning. Hi. How are you? <laughs> good. How are you? <laughs> Thanks for having we're doing me on your good. show. And, uh, you're our, yeah, you're our second guest this morning, and uh, we're going on a theme here. So tell us a little about <clears> yourself <throat> and when you started having contacts and so forth. About seven years ago, well, I passed away in 2013, and I had something in my arm right here, and so mm -hmm. it got infected. Sorry, I got RSV, so I'm like <coughs> struggling. That's, that's okay. Yeah, baby. It got infected. They removed it. I'm, on, I'm doing Oh, okay. Um, it had its own circulatory system. And that happened like 20 years ago or so. And then okay. I passed away in 2013. And it was like a f switch was flipped when I well, died like and near came back. You had a near death, you had a near death yeah. experience. Okay. Yeah. What was that like for people for an NDE? It was, I, I was mad when I came back. You were mad. I didn't want to come back. Um, oh, okay. I was, I was. First, I was in like a dark space. I was just like in a black space, but really? I was coddled like um, I was coddled in like a fetal position and I was lit up 
And it was like a place for me to heal. It was like okay. I felt just like it was like I was being held by something amazing and just like mm. coddled. Yeah. And then I was in a place where it was like misty and raining and I could feel not raining, but like misty and I could right. feel the misty on my face. And then we were walking. I was the only human, but there was like the being I was walking to looked like um, Star Wars when they're in the cantina, the elephant being really okay looked like that. And we were walking towards this mountain that looked like a pyramid, but it looked like a mountain. Mm -hmm. You know, you wouldn't mm -hmm. be able to tell, yeah. like, is that a pyramid or is that a mountain? It looked like that. And then I came back. Did it feel like, this is interesting, because you were an NDE experience. Did uh, When you mentioned this, I'm trying to envision it. Were you on, like, a landmass of some sort when you were in this other yes. place? So you were yes. physically somewhere else. Like, people say, you know, like, everyone's different. You know, some people say, well, you know, the, the traditional people say, well, you die, you go to heaven. In your case, so let's translate this as a more galactic or cosmic way in a little bit. You were taken into another realm physically out of your body. When you were in that other realm, were you physical, physical like you are here? Or were you yes. in a, you were physically solid? I looked like me, yes. You were you there. So there was Walking no like on you, land. Like, I could you feel like, the mist. Right. You weren't a ghost. You're actually a physical being, human there. So you were your body was the, on Earth and your body was there. So you were there was the you and the you there, the other you, so to speak. Yes. Interesting. It Very gets interesting. complicated. It gets yeah. complicated as a story. Can I just go grab my drink real quick? Oh, grab I'll your be, drink. Go ahead. Yeah. Thank you. I'll be right back. Very interesting story. So she's an NDE experience, which I find I've not heard too many stories directly here on the show. That is really interesting. So she's got an NDE experience going. Physically, folks, she's physically herself and having these experiences. <coughs> now, the mountain, the pyramid or the mountain, <coughs> then eventually you were feeling coddled, like that someone was coddling you. You couldn't see them. Mm -hmm. Did you feel like mm -hmm. they were trying to heal you or make you feel better or what was going yes. on? Yes. I feel like I was being healed because, like, again, when I came back, before it was like I was just wandering. You know, I couldn't, like, fit in, find my purpose. But when I passed away and it came back, it was like a, a switch was flipped. Right. I could do other things. I, I didn't have as many blocks and barriers on me as I used to. Yeah. <clears throat> but then I was, um, I passed away because I was, uh, I died of a drug overdose. So oh, okay. when I was in recovery, I moved back in with my dad and, mm -hmm. um, things started going crazy at his house. And I was waking up with like bruises and, huh. you know, so we got a, a paranormal team to come in and then they like, um, they did their investigation. They found a bunch of crazy stuff in the house, but then like a, a witch told me I was the problem and needed to work with my energy. So, mm -hmm. and, and need to show me about energy and stuff like that. Cause I had no clue. So I joined their coven. They showed me about energy and all this stuff and how to like, sense it outside your body what things feel like because i didn't know you know yeah. um and then i noticed there were entities around me what kind of entities were around you though you know what they, were they um i also got in an accident i was an embalmer at work and a casket fell on me like between oh my god and so my back hurt a lot and something would start massaging my back mm -hmm. like i could feel you know, I don't know if you have any um, ghost experience or anything, but entities, they can, like, throw stuff. They can scratch you. They can bite yeah. you. I've never had one massage me. Yeah. You know, <laughs> never yeah. been, you know, massaged by, and um, and it didn't scare me. And for, mm -hmm. like, a year and a half, these entities would, like, tell me where things were. You know, tell me when money was coming in. They massage. They're trying to build a relationship with me. Right. And then I went to my mentor or my high priestess and I was like, I've got this going on. What mm -hmm. do I do? And she's like, you need to contact it, go into the meditation, mm -hmm. contact it. And so I went into the meditation and it was like being sucked through a tube. It's like being sucked huh. through a tube. And then as soon as I got there, I, I freaked out and I backed out and I started crying. But as soon as and I went back in, as soon as I got into the space, they said, draw. 
And I'm like, so I got out and for eight hours, I st for eight hours a day, I was drawing, 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 yeah. drawing. And I drawed so much that the place where my, my um, mm -hmm. implant was taken out, got right. a staph infection. Huh. And it got like this big. And so I couldn't use my right arm anymore. And so my kid's like, well, if this is automatic and these beings are drawing, use your left. Yeah. Makes sense. So I started using my left. Mm -hmm. And then I noticed I was in the bathtub. So it gets a little personal. Yeah. And they started like um, showing me how to work, you know, um, my body. and um, body. Yeah, and, and use, you know, muscles that I didn't yeah. know that I had. And mm -hmm. when I first started drawing, it was just sitting on the floor drawing. And then it was with two hands. And now, seven years later, right? we are... You know, I yeah, listen to your, when I listen to your story, and I, if you watch my show enough, um, I get information um, to help people. So one of the things I know you mentioned the coven and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. What I'm getting in because I, I I work in a very high frequency of light, and um, one of the things you should work on is Christ consciousness. And I'm not talking about 3D religion. I'm talking about when I you know I've seen all that. I'm talking about the cosmic Christ, which is way different than right. earth based religions. Right. Have you have you you know so when you when you meditate, think of the Christed beings of light, and if you keep and if you put your frequency, everything's a frequency. If you put right. your frequency into that, you know, uh, you don't have to go to a high priestess for information. All you have to do is connect with the Christed frequencies, which will actually uh, activate your cellular structure as a human being to a much higher frequency than you are now, even. That's what they're doing. They're doing yeah. this when they. I have kind of like a bio suit on so I can do some of the yeah. things that I can do. Yeah. Um, when they did this, it came with, see this. Oh yeah. What is all that? That's with them. That's them. Oh my God. That's why I can do all the stuff that I can do. Doctors don't know what it is. And the only oh, the reason doctors? I can hold up, I can hold up. They have me working with a clipboard that's five pounds for an hour. Holding hmm. in the air, tossing it, throwing it. Hmm. You know, I mean, this is, you know, and when you work with these beings, they don't let you work with them dirty. You've mm -hmm. got to go pull up all your trauma, all mm -hmm. your past, all your dirt, and you've got to heal or else they won't work with you. That's the first yeah. thing they do to you when they start working with you is they have you yeah. clean yourself up. Yeah. You know what I mean? But, you can't but, work with these like, guys. So when you show the arm, I think a lot of people have questions. I've never seen that before in a human being. Is why would they, you know, why could they not do stuff without making those circular things on your arm? That's what I think um, a lot of people have a question about. I have no idea how that works. Yeah. All I know is before this, I couldn't do the things I can do now. Yeah, you so, they, um, so you've been healed of things is there any way when you communicate with these beings is there any way of saying well why are you doing this and how come it can't be done without my arms having these circular things i've never seen that before in my life okay this is what they said this is a physical world and in order for me to you know it's a physical world you know they have to go through things through the physical body and right. they call this basically an upgrade an upgrade so yeah, it's like a biological hmm. suit, they call it. Huh, interesting. I mean, it's and just amazing. I've doctors never seen won't touch me. Everybody that. thinks yeah. I'm crazy. Nobody will have, um, you know, nobody will talk. Even though I can, I'm doing shit that, you know, Yeah. most people can't. And so the uh, doctors, the, what, well, Western doctors are, are what they are, the Western doctors. They don't understand right. metaphysical things. And the ones that do, there are very few of them in the medical field. But um, oh, yeah. so I think it's very interesting, you know, what you're sh when you showed your arm, that just blew me away because I'm saying, wait a minute, because I work in a very cosmic frequency. And I'm saying, OK, is, you know, as long if you feel that the beings are not hurting you and they're helping you, 
that that you know you have you know it's your it's your physical body so when you say they that they keep me pretty much privatized i don't you know when you work with with beings like this you don't have many friends mm -hmm. you they right. keep you you know i've been basically isolated and in training for like 7 years Seven years now. Do they say these beings? Do they say where they're from? Do you know where they're from? Another dimension. Another, Another dimension. dimension. Okay. Yes, mm. they're interdimensional. And they're interdimensional. They're, and, and I so I, I completely get the interdimensional. So are they like uh, have if you see them? What would they? If you had to describe these interdimensional beings, what would you say they look like? Your contact. Blue. They're blue. blue. Okay. And they shimmer like um rainbow, like the rainbow iridescent. Yeah, very beautiful, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay, I get yeah. it. That and like very it, tall. Very tall. Yes. So I would say they come from. They come from the Cirrus constellation. If they if they have that bluish color, they're from that that actual constellational area. They haven't told I, me who they are. Or no, they don't have to. Where they come. Where they I know come that from. they're from that area. Yeah, they're from that area. I'm just really surprised, you know, again, maybe because of their frequency, because you have a physical human body. The reason why you have all those things there on your arm is because they had to work with what they have here in the human form of this dimension. So yeah. I can completely understand it. I think that's exactly why what you were trying to describe, I'm now understanding it better in terms of, uh, you know, of what's going on. Interesting. Very mm -hmm. interesting. You know, you're the first uh, person I've talked to about any of this. Yeah. Like, and someone says what they've done is they've taken the poison out of your body. Uh, so like, I don't know if there's a poison. That's a that's, good way of putting it. Uh, they're saying I, what they did is those holes represent the releasing of all that negative poison in your body that was preventing you from physically doing things. So that that's a good observation by one good, of our viewers. Yeah, I think a that's a really good observation. Um, thank you for, for and that was coming from uh, who said that um, it was uh, a cab cab -lum -cum says that so yeah very interesting observation that person out there thank that you for is saying a good that. observation yeah you know it's like it's like having big opening pores in your body like when you have a fever and the fever comes out and you get you know it's the ending of being sick it usually is coming out of pores, little tiny holes in your body, which we have, that releases. So you have these big holes that the these blue beings created to release all the stuff that was like blocking you. Uh, so that's pretty interesting. Now I, I can understand. Now someone said bed bugs, but you don't have any bed bugs in your bed, right? No, I don't have any bed bugs. No. So no, are, these, no, I've had these since I got the implant. Like these yeah. came with that implant. So these yeah. start popping up as soon as they took it out. Yeah, interesting. Now the implant, who put the implant in there? Can you give us some background about that? I don't know. That was when yeah. I was in my thirties, like early thirties. Yeah. So was that, you think 20s. that was a different different group of beings that did that? Because uh, I think this is the same, the same, same people. Yeah, hmm. same group. Interesting. I think it's the same group. A lot to th it's a lot to for people to. You know, this is a discussion that a lot of people are going to have to take in and meditate on. It's a more, really very interesting discussion we're having. Um, it's been a, it's so, been crazy. Somebody says, Conscious Evolution says, can you show the circles again? People are very intrigued with the circles. I think they want to try yeah. to understand them. So, yeah, so there are the circles there. And she says they're not bed bugs. They're in a specific, mm -hmm. and the, the thing is, they're in a specific part of your arm. They're not all over your arm. They're in that one area. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Wow. You know? No, it's definitely not bites. And, you know, no, again. it's not. It's not. So she knows, again, we're not in her shoes. And I always tell people, with people that have experiences, you know, the person that's in their, sh in, who's in the shoes is telling you their experience. So if you're not in their shoes, you can learn something from that person regardless. But that's pretty amazing. Uh, the, one person, Diane, says, <coughs> do these, <coughs> do they hurt when you does it on no. their holes? Mm -mm. No, yeah. they don't. They no don't no hurt. hurt at all. Okay. No. One person says, no. do they itch? 
Do you have like I love you too. Sometimes, sometimes, but not often. No, mm -hmm. they don't leak fluid. No. Yeah. Yeah, and, I and try to get doctors to look at them. Yeah, they won't look at them, right? Mm -hmm. Why do you think the doctors won't look at them? I don't know. I don't know. It's been years. Um, one doctor, you know, um, Morgellons was the, you know, thing that was mentioned. So mm -hmm. I've just kind of mm -hmm. been trying to treat it as best as, as I can. But mm -hmm. I don't know. You know, there are my arms and both these legs. Yeah. So when Marion Thompson says the doctors are scared. Do you think the doctors are scared? They could be. Yeah. I don't they know. Be. They're scared of me, definitely. And when I, um, you. yeah, yeah, I hmm. don't know. They, I've got an energy about me that, you know, um, I don't, yeah. And I, I, I tell them what I think, you know what I mean? Um, but yeah. doctors give me, you know, they, they give me a hard time. So yeah. I don't well, really. Again, we're dealing with Western medicine here. It'd be kind of interesting what eastern medicine would do like like in india if they saw that like an indian doctor versus a western doctor what their perceptions of reality are based on what they would see you might get a whole different perception because we we know how western doctors deal with things and pharmaceutical companies on our planet they they think True. the way to look at something like this is to you know patch it up with something that they don't even understand what it is so yeah it's very interesting yeah the practice of medicine <laughs> The practice of medicine and there are natural medicines but i don't think this has anything to do with medicine um i just find your story absolutely fascinating i think everybody thank does you. thank I've you never, for hearing ever, it thank you for oh, yeah. me tell my story on my show and i've been in radio for 20 years doing on npr radio a show called astro command radio uh, cosmic eye i've been connected with the galactic levels for when i was a contactee in the 60s as a kid with space people so I've had nothing but positive experiences. So we're having connections with uh, beings from the star system Sirius now through radio communications. You'll probably want to watch my show tomorrow night. Uh, we'll be uh, doing radio broadcasting uh, through frequencies where they'll communicate through radio spectrums on a spaceship. Uh, so yeah. Oh wow. You'll, yeah, you'll that be able to watch. That sounds really that. cool. Yeah, it's going to be these 11 like, p.m. These guys are like parents to me. Parents, They're okay. Yeah, they they um, they're like trainers, you know. They they hmm. um, they they were they're, there's you know I got one with me all the time, you know. Okay. I call him Tyrus, um, mm -hmm. but yeah, they they make sure I you know it's like having your parents stand behind you all the time to make sure you don't yeah. mess up. Yeah. You know, if I'm too mean, they because I tend to be a little mean. You know, um, they they let me know. You know. Yeah, and, and where do you think the where do you think the you know would you like to get rid of the meanness part of that consciousness? Me? Would you like to get rid? Um, yeah. You say you tend well, to be you know, mean. Planet Is Earth. Right? Yeah, on planet Earth though, being a woman, yeah. you you've got to have that part. You know what I mean? Like you've got to. Or or could you have the ability not to be mean but to be empowered? Uh, and just stand as a like a lioness or a lion. And well, what I'm trying well, to say is, you know, without the a meanness. lioness, a lioness growls. You yeah. know, you're not scared of a lioness because they're pretty. Right. You know what I mean? Lioness right. growl, and you right. you respect a lioness because you might get your ass bit, right? Right. So as long as you know, I I match energy. You know, mm -hmm. I just don't take people's crap. So yeah. if people well, no, come that, up, that you, know, you 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 basically here to not, and I don't either. I mean that's. I'm from a, a true contact teller. Experience. Yeah, from a contactee experience, there are people, you know, I I mean, I once had somebody in an angel store in my face laughing at me because my friend who owned the angel store was with the Ashtar Command. And I said, I said to the guy, I said, you know, what are you laughing at? You're in an angel store. You say you believe in angels, but you don't believe in what I'm telling you. And by the time I got done talking to him, his laughing stopped because what I was saying, just like you're saying, sometimes when you're mm -hmm. a cosmic truth teller and someone's laughing at you, they won't really laugh too much longer when you stay you look right in their eye and say, look, I'm from another planet because I'm from Mars. You know, you know, he would laugh. And this other person, there was another person that did this to me. And I, uh, I just basically drew him out to be not what he said he was, you know, like uh, exactly. really cool looking. You can look cool, but looks are deceiving because it doesn't want, it's not what you look like. It's, it's who you are. 
if you're exactly. from another planet, you're going to be it's, that person of light. If you're not, if you're not going to be the light that you say you are, then you're basically a hypocrite, you know. And there's a lot of that you, on. Exactly. There. And when you start healing, people are like, "What happens when you start mm -hmm. start actually healing? You start expressing yourself, right? You know, That's what I mean, right. you start telling your truths. And people, yeah. you know, that sounds great. P people don't like that. People don't like truth tellers. People don't like people that tell the truth. And yeah, That's there's right. a time and place and stuff like that. But you know, when you start healing, you'll know because you'll start pissing more people off because you start opening uh -huh. your mouth more. Yeah. So. Well, and here what we do is when we get trolls on this show, we have moderators that are great. We just That's kick awesome. their butts out of here. We block them because we're doing a talk show. We're not like other TikToks where they're having debates. We don't do that here. Uh, we're a talk show, and that's the concept exactly. of what I started. So we have a beautiful place of light where we don't let anybody get talked down to. Uh, we'll just knock them right out on the show. That's so I'm really awesome. glad you came on here. You shared a great story. And definitely, um, you know, I would say incorporate the Christ consciousness levels of meditation because you're doing some good stuff. And if you do that, all yeah. you've got to do in doing the meditations is when you close your eyes, if you have like the Alexa app or whatever, Asked it, you know, if you go on YouTube, uh, uh, listen to some Christ ambient music. I, I play a lot of ambient stuff on my show, on my radio show, mixed in with what I do. The ambient music has a certain frequency, and you'll feel a lot of beautiful energy. And if you just say, I'd like to connect with the Christed beings of light and incorporate that with your contacts already, it's going to even amp up your consciousness, even your just very awakened soul, as you already are. It's going to make you go so high up, you're not going to know what to do with yourself. So have fun with it. Thank you. Thank you. And thank All you right. for having me. Oh, no, I was glad to have you on here. I think we learned a lot. Uh, it's just you have an incredible story, and I just really loved it. Thank you so much for coming on here. Thank you. And I am following you, so everybody follow each other. It's all about on this show. Oh, oh, thank you very much. We appreciate it. We're getting out to about 10 something. I don't know what time it is now, but we're getting close to ending. Hey, and thanks again, uh, Worst Witch, for coming on. And I just want to thank people for joining us here. It's about 10.15. We'll be out of here by 10.30. So, um, you know, I, I'm just glad to have everybody here. And uh, it's just really beautiful story. Uh, a very different story that you know everybody's stories are different and I think that's what makes it interesting here on the show uh, please uh, support what I do here go to my Venmo my Venmo app is on my main page uh, and I would encourage people that have Venmo uh, to do five ten or fifteen dollars it's your choice I also would like to get more TikTok uh, gifts uh, before we end the show today at 1030 so if you've not gifted our show uh, we do appreciate the support. And, uh, yes, very different grace, very different and concerning, Commander. Yes. And it's a story that we haven't heard before. Um, so it's another expression of a story of someone who's had something, a very different experience than other people. And then we had uh, uh, Druid on, Gray Druid on before. Um, and we'll do one more guest on here. A matter of fact, uh, do you have encounter experience? Uh, Carlito, yes. Thank you, uh, Mystic Marvin. I've been a contactee since the 60s. Uh, as a kid, I met beings on a ship. I was looking at them from the window of my, my house at night. Men, women, and children with uh, light blue space outfits on that were human, that were telepathic, and very loving people. Um, so that was my first experience. Thank you, Johnny Miller, for doing what you do. Um, yeah, we we our, our moderators are really quick. So if you're going to troll here, you're going to be kicked out. We don't want to. Don't even mute them. Just kick them out. If there's any trolls here, moderators, just uh, block them. You know, uh, don't even give them a chance to do their stuff. Um, you know, and I'm just going to. Again, I appreciate the gifts and everything. Also, my Venmo account. Become a subscriber. Uh, let me see here. And we're going to pin the galaxy. I'm pinning the galaxy here. So if you see me with the pin on the galaxy, what it's saying, uh, we are looking to get some galaxies. Tomorrow night is our big show. I have it promoted. Please share. It's on my main channel. 
uh, our contact with Gattaco uh, on his spaceship. And the way I'm going to explain this is Gattaco probably will be here invisible to me, sitting, uh, being right in the room with me or on the spaceship. I don't know yet how that works. I'm not sure if he's going to be here, but then he's going to communicate, even if he's here, communicating through radio frequency, even though he's going to be standing right here. So tomorrow night I'll be asking him if he is right next to me or if he's on a ship. If he's right next to me and going through the radio, I'm going to ask him if he would physically appear on my screen. So I'm going to do that tomorrow night too. There's a lot of things I have questions about with Gattaco. And uh, it's going to be a crazy night tomorrow night. Starting at 11 p.m., that's 10 p.m. Central, 9 p.m. Mountain, 8 p.m. Uh, West Coast, and 3, a, uh, 3 p.m. if you're in uh, Australia. And if you're in Europe, you know, whatever time it is there. So if you've heard about what we've been doing with our contacts for uh, since late October, um, uh, we're doing it here live. We want, uh, we're having the contact here live so people can uh, see that we are documenting communications with real people. Um, they're about seven, eight feet tall. Uh, they are bluish, radiant, uh, kind of off like a blue and some other radiant color, men and women on this ship. They come from a planet in the constellation Cirrus and will be communicating through radio transmission frequencies on AM radios. Uh, I'll be getting the radio tomorrow. It's coming in the, in the mail. It's getting delivered tomorrow. John Connors in Arizona will have the same radio. We're both guided to get these radios, specifically the same radios. And uh, Susan, thank you for the Galaxy. So we will have our radio sitting here on the table uh, to the exact frequency that John Connors will be set to. And then I'm going to see if the voice communications comes through the frequency of uh, not only my radio, obviously if it comes through his, I'm assuming they'll be able to transmit through uh, my radio as well. So uh, we have a, a lot of stuff planned for tomorrow night. Uh, thank you for the blue. Thank you for the galaxy. Um, you know, we're just uh, very happy to have you. Thank you, Big Papa, for the blue. We appreciate that so much, everybody. And all of you, F. King, thank you for the roses. So I want to acknowledge people that are gifting here. Please become a subscriber. If you've run out of your subscription because you, for whatever reason, resubscribe. Some of you uh, probably are waiting to resubscribe again. So we're looking to get 100 subscribers. That'll go to our nice vision equipment for our Ashtar Command C5 group here in the United States here in Connecticut. We have about 15, 20 dedicated people here that are connected uh, with our C5 group. And uh, so we are planning to do some... In the spring, we'll be going out to the Long Island Sound area. We'll also be doing stuff at an apple orchard uh, and uh, uh, bringing in visual contact with the spaceships. Um, uh, our new C5 here, I call this C5, is the contact with Gattaco. That's a new level of C5, and uh, I've tried to contact by email uh, Dr. Greer's group about this, but I have not gotten a response back uh, with Dr. Greer's group, they're very hard to get in touch with. So if anybody has a phone number for Dr. Greer's group and uh, message me the number, I'd like to try to reach them about what's going on here. I'm a little bit skeptical, but willing to listen. Ah, Big Papa, it's uh, good that you're, you know, I'm a healthy skeptic, uh, even though I'm involved as a contactee. And when I say skeptic, only when it comes to channeling information. When it comes to actual contact, uh, Big Papa, watch the video on my main page, we got a co coming through the radio. That'll blow your mind. So uh, there's not, you know, there's on that note, for anybody, go to my main page, watch that video. You'll hear Gattaco speak. Lights flickering on John's end. Uh, the power was going on and off. If you watch that video, that's all real uh, audio coming through the radio, coming through Gattaco speaking. And that will turn your skepticism on that level, you know, on that level, you're, you won't have more skepticism because we're making direct contact with them and it's not channeled. Uh, we don't have interjected audio recordings, nothing like that. Everything that happens here is actually real. So anyway, thank you for being here. We'll be on tonight. Uh, Thursday night, we'll be on tonight at around 11 for the nighttime edition. 
of our normal show, Encounters Late Night, with your host, Commander Aliyah. Everybody take care. Have a good morning, and we'll see you uh, tonight. All right.